Hey, welcome in everybody. We are live with our first live episode of Level Up Law for 2022. So um, welcome back. I'm attorney Susan Ingalls with South Carolina Legal Services. I'm here with our producer, Kenneth Elliott from our legal services IT department. And, uh, you know, every Tuesday at noon, we level up your legal knowledge with uh, some information about an area of law that we practice in. So we're always glad to have you live, but also remember that we do post a recording of all these episodes on our YouTube channel. Uh, Kenneth usually gets that done pretty quickly within 24 hours or less, so you can find it there. Um, I do want to remind you before we get started, as always, um, this is not legal advice. Uh, this is just general information for the public. If you feel like you have an issue about today's subject and you want some legal advice, definitely contact um, South Carolina Legal Services to see if you um, are eligible for some help from us, or you can always contact the South Carolina Bar Association. Um, all of our information about how to apply will be shown in the final slide today, so you'll have that information um, available to you. Um, I will be able to answer questions if anybody has any at the end, and I do invite those of you who are watching this um, as a recording on our YouTube channel, um, please leave a comment if you have a um, question that's just general that we can answer, um, or if you have um, a request of a particular legal topic that you would like us to address in 2022. Um, that's another way that you can let us know that. So um, let's get started on today's topic, which is disputing errors in your credit report. Um, starting off 2022, we want everybody to be cleaning up their credits so that it will, you'll have an uh, easy time uh, in the future if you want to apply for some uh, new credit uh, whether it be a mortgage or a credit card, a bank account or anything like that. Um, sometimes a problem or error on your credit report can cause you problems. And we just wanna go over some information about what you can do about that. Um, so of course, credit report being one of the most important items in your financial life, we do want you to know why is it important to correct those errors. And mainly it's because your credit report contains so much information about you, personal information, whether it be you know, who you are, where you live, where you work, do you pay your bills on time? You know, have you ever filed bankruptcy and all sort of uh, things like that. And so you wanna make sure that it stays accurate uh, because if it's not accurate, then that can cause you some problems and accuracy is something that you cannot assume when it comes to your credit report. Um, they have they make mistakes just like everybody else. And of course, we know that um, there are the three major uh, companies that we think of when we think of our credit reports, and that's Equifax, Experian, Experian and TransUnion. Um, we sometimes refer to those as the credit bureau or a credit reporting agency is what um, attorneys generally um, refer to those as CRAs, the credit reporting agencies. And again, it's important because that information that is on there um, can have an effect on whether or not you're able to get approved for a mortgage or a credit card or some other kind of credit. It can sometimes even affect your insurance, your ability to get a job, and even your ability to find a place uh, to rent. And um, so keep in mind that how important uh, your credit report is. I think we all know that, but it's good to be reminded of why it's important and how it can affect you. So what can you do if there's an error in your credit report? Well, basically you can submit a dispute. Um, at your request, a CRA has to uh, do an investigation of what you say they have got wrong on your credit report. So there's a you know, process for doing that. We'll talk about, uh, and then I'll be giving you 10 tips 
to um, hopefully make your dispute to a credit reporting agency or furnisher um, successful. So the Fair Credit Reporting Act um, provides these um, tools for you to dispute an error on your credit report. It also, um, as we'll mention at the end of this presentation, um, gives you a way to um, force the uh, credit reporting agency or CRA to get your credit report accurate, but also to get damages from them if they have caused you um, some kind of loss. So um, that's a more particular subject that we won't go into detail about today as far as lawsuits under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, but we'll talk about it just a little bit. Now, when you submit a dispute, and we'll talk about how to do that, but when you do that, um, the CRA does have to investigate. Now, usually that's within 30 days, um, but it, it may be, you know, sometimes it may be more. Um, and so uh, usually what they do is they take what you submit to them as the dispute, and they'll send that to what's called the furnisher. And that's gonna be either the original creditor, maybe a debt collector, or whoever is actually reporting this debt um, inaccurately on your report. So they'll send your information to the furniture, furnisher and say, okay, uh, this uh, consumer says that um, what you've reported is not correct, um, please respond. And so they do have to, you know, investigate and uh, respond to the dispute. Um, now keep in mind that although the furnisher needs to respond to the credit reporting agency, and as we'll talk about in a minute, you need to send that dispute also to the furnisher, like the credit card company or whoever has reported you as being someone who pays their bills late or whatever. Um, that has to be, um, it can be reported to both, but your rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act only kick in if you have sent that dispute to the credit reporting agencies, the Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Um, a few more, you know, just bits of information on that is that they do need to give you a uh, written uh, response. And um, quite often, the, that result is not going to be what you would like it to be. Um, so you need to be diligent and keep trying, especially if you're sure that this is an error on your credit report. Now, if they do uh, find it to be inaccurate, meaning the furnisher, like say Capital One Credit Card Company, <clears throat> they do have to uh, notify all three of the agencies so that it can be corrected in your file. Because you need to keep in mind, if you just got the one credit report and you saw the um, error there, it's quite likely that that same furnisher of information, that same credit card company or whoever submitted that same incorrect information to the other uh, credit bureaus as well. Now, also, if they do change or delete an item after you've uh, uh, disputed it, um, they cannot return that same bad information to your file. So that's important uh, to know. And then um, the credit reporting agency has to send you written notice that includes all the information about that furnisher. Um, and also, again, if it's something that's corrected, uh, you can ask that notices of the correction be sent to anyone who has gotten your report in the past six months. That's a longer period of time if someone has gotten this incorrect uh, information from the credit reporting agency for employment purposes, and that's two years. Okay, so now you dispute, you made your dispute, and we'll, again, in the 10 tips, we'll talk about the best way to do that. But you've made your dispute and maybe you've even made it multiple times 
but it hasn't been corrected or acknowledged as being an error. So um, if that happens, um, you know, there's some things you can do. Um, they do have to make a reasonable investigation, but sometimes it's not much of an investigation. It may just be a very minimal investigation. So it's, it's quite possible that even though you're correct, um, that it's an error, they're not going to acknowledge it. They'll just send it to the furnisher, send whatever you sent, and say, please respond. Uh, now, they should send everything to the furnisher, including any kind of documentation that you submit. Um, and that documentation is always really important um, because it supports what you're claiming. If you just say, I never had this credit card, you know, um, that may not be enough. So, um, you know, with these kind of minimal you know, reviews that they often do, you, you know, you may find that they're not correcting anything or, as I said, acknowledging even that it's an error. So that can be very frustrating, of course, um, but you still need to do the disputing. Um, and there's some other things, you know, that you can do as well. Um, sometimes a furnisher will actually admit that they were wrong or just for good customer relations, they'll say, okay, we'll correct this in the way that you say it could be, should be corrected. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, if they don't respond to the dispute when the credit reporting agency um, sends it to them, um, technically the, that um, item is supposed to be deleted from your as a negative item on your credit report. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, uh, now, finally, obviously, if it's not corrected and you feel like it should be and it's causing you, you know, issues in getting credit, then you do have a claim under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And again, as I mentioned earlier, keep in mind that you have to have made this dispute first. So in other words, you can't get your credit report and say, oh, there's an error here on my credit report. Now I'm going to sue this uh, furnishing company under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. No, actually, you have to alert them that there's an error and give them an opportunity to correct it and give the furnisher the opportunity to correct it. Now, if after that, it's not been corrected, and then after that, it causes you um, some kind of damage, like not being able to get a mortgage or, you know, being turned down for a credit card or whatever, then those can be actual damages in an FCRA lawsuit in the future. Okay. And again, other things you can do if the investigation doesn't resolve things, um, be sure to ask that your statement of dispute be included in your credit file with all three of the uh, credit reporting agencies and that it be included in any future reports. You want anybody that's checking your credit to see that you've disputed this and see, you know, what your um, reasoning was. Uh, uh, also, again, you can ask the uh, credit reporting agency to provide your statement to anyone who has received a report recently on you. Now, um, if you tell the furnisher that you dispute the item, then a notice of your dispute must be included any time that that furnisher reports the item to a CRA. And again, you also may be able to file a lawsuit under the FCRA against not only the CRA, but also the furniture. But again, keep in mind that you've still got to um, send that dispute to the CRA. Um, another thing you can do is file a complaint with uh, these couple, uh, there's some government agencies that can be helpful in these situations. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau um, has an online complaint system, so you can file a complaint there. Um, you can also um, file a complaint with your local attorney general, um, such as the one, <coughs> the one here in South Carolina.
So what are our 10 tips that we want you to follow when you're submitting a dispute of something on your uh, credit report? Because you know, you want to keep in mind, you may not get results, <clears throat> you've got the Fair Credit Reporting Act, but also you gotta protect those rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act and do what you can to you know, make the uh, dispute work to begin with so you don't have to get into a lawsuit. So here's number one. Of course, request an investigation. Make your dispute, ask that an investigation be done and do it in writing. I think this is really important because you know, everything is online now and we like the ease of doing things online. But when it comes to credit reporting and a potential um, lawsuit down the road, you really want to have that documentary evidence of what you did. And you can't always get that if you are doing it through uh, the agency's website. So you don't have to um, do it in writing but it's something that we uh, we definitely recommend so that you have a, a record. Um, you want to keep copies of correspondence. Um, when you send the written report, you want to um, follow up with a telephone call. If you do it by telephone, you want to follow it up or you do it online, follow it up with a written uh, confirmation. Say, I sent you this dispute um, on your website, please confirm or you know, I called you and made a dispute over the phone. Please confirm your receipt. Um, but again, the reason I like the written submission is you can make sure that you have documentary evidence that it was delivered um, to the three uh, credit reporting agencies and to the company that furnished the information. You do that by certified mail, return and receipt requesting, get that green card back, or you can do it <clears throat> by some other overnight uh, uh, delivery of some sort. But you want to be able to confirm that you sent it, when you sent it, and have a copy of the dispute and all of the documentary evidence. Now, number two, tip number two, order um, a new credit report and review it for new errors. Sometimes you've got the credit report, you see a dispute that's on there and you're um, zeroed in and focused on that. But once you're gonna get into the mode of disputing errors, you wanna go ahead and just get a fresh report ordered and make sure um, what all is on there. Is this error still on there? Are there others? Um, to make sure you capture all of all of that inaccurate information in your dispute. Um, you know, uh, it's, as we mentioned here, uh, furnishers are furnishing information to your credit report every month. So every month there's a potential for something new um, to be reported inaccurately. So um, sometimes the uh, creditors are going to get uh, more information than one that is sent directly to you as far as in a credit report. So for example, if you apply for a mortgage and the mortgage company that's going to loan you the money um, request a credit report. It, you know, usually you have to pay for that credit report um, when they order it. And um, they can order credit reports that use not as much information. So they can just give your um, name or address. You know, usually they're gonna give your um, social security number, but they may get more information on a credit report than what you get in the one that you ask for. So you wanna keep that. Um, in mind. You want to review this new report that you get again for any new errors. It can even be the misspelling of your name that can really make a difference. And as noted here, there's something called a mixed file. And we see these cases a lot. And what that means is that your name and your credit file has been somehow mixed up or combined with someone who has the same name. 
and then that may uh, end up causing good or bad credit information to be reported as being yours when it really isn't. And the way that um, we suggest, and I think most attorneys suggest this, um, when you check your credit report and you're going to be making a dispute, make a copy of the report. They don't mark up and write notes and all on that original report that you get. Make a copy because you want to keep the original report. So you make a copy and circle everything that you think is a mistake, whether it just be up at the top the spelling of your name, if it's um, a particular amount claimed due on a credit card or a notation that your mortgage payment was 60 days late, anything like that, circle all of them and put a number beside them. And then that way, when you are writing out your detail of what you're disputing, you can refer to the numbers of the line item on your credit report. And that makes it a lot easier for them to figure out what you're talking about and to make sure that they uh, fully address it and investigate it. Tip number three, um, you know, all of the credit reporting agencies have their own forms, whether it be online or otherwise. And it's fine to um, utilize their form if, you know, if they require any dispute to include that form. Um, but here's some warnings. Um, you may have more detail that you want to provide than what their form allows. And so you can give as much detail as you want or need to, and especially, most importantly, detail that's relevant. And uh, you don't want to have your claim pigeonholed into some particular category of just a few categories that they list on their form. Um, you know, sometimes they have like a little checkbox of um, these are reasons to dispute your credit report. Um, but again, you can also write on there, see attachment. And, you know, you have your attachment that gives more, uh, more detail. Um, same thing with internet uh, uh, disputes. You know, there's going to be sort of that checkbox format that limits you in what you're saying. So um, just be sure that you fully explain what the problem is and don't just do that very narrow um, report that a form might call for. And, uh, and again, here we just want to mention again, even if you're doing that online dispute, um, you want to keep a copy of it and keep a copy of anything that you're able to send in with the online dispute. Um, these days, there's lots of problems sometimes with keeping those computer records. Um, we quite often see clients who maybe have done a dispute or uh, something of that nature online, but they had a breakdown in their computer and they thought because it was on their computer that they would always have that information. But after a, a breakdown of their computer, the information isn't there anymore. So always make uh, paper copies or print out paper um, versions of what you do online if you choose to do it online. Okay, and tip number four, keep a file of all of that, all those communications, um, starting with whatever receipt you have to show that they received your uh, dispute and your request for an investigation. Um, everything that you send to them and everything that they send to you, you should keep in a particular folder um, in a safe place at home. Uh, so you don't lose it because if it ends up that you um, have to dispute further or file a lawsuit, you're going to need all that information or your lawsuit is not going to go very far. Um, now, telephone calls, if you're not getting any uh, response or they're slow to respond or any kind of follow up that you have um, by telephone or even if you do it by email, you want to keep copies of emails, if it's by email, um, if you're doing something by text, you can also print out your text messages So do that. And then if you're talking to them on the telephone, just keep in your folder that you've set up, keep 
notes of all of those calls. What day was it? What time was it? Who'd you talk to? What was said? And that helps you to, you know, refresh your recollection uh, later on if you forget some of those details. Now, um, tip number five, you want to, of course, notify the creditor who reported this information, or what we call the furnisher, you want to notify them that you're disputing this. And it's important that, um, that they get the um, report along with the credit reporting agency, because um, you know, that way you can legally enforce your rights under the FCRA doing it with the CRA plus with the um, furniture. And another good reason for sending that full copy to the furniture is that when they get the request for an investigation from the credit reporting agency, so for example, you know, Bank of America um, gets a dispute where you disputed uh, an error in reporting on your credit card. So they can't say, oh, we, you know, we don't see anything. There's not enough information here, whatever it is. They've gotten the same information that that CRA has gotten from you. And hopefully it'll be chock full of detail so that they have to really, um, you know, look into it. So you don't want to limit the information that you're sending and you want to send it to the furnisher as well as those credit reporting agencies. Usually on the credit report, they will have their address on there, the furniture will. Um, but if they don't, um, you can call them, like call Bank of America. Where do I send um, this copy of a dispute about my, how y'all reported on my credit report? And they hopefully will give you an address. If not, um, you just need to get the best business address that you can get. And make a note in your uh, list of notes that they were not able to give you a proper address or refuse to give you one. I think you should you know, have success in, in calling and getting that address. Might have to go through a telephone tree, but eventually you'll get it. Okay, tip number six. Um, send the dispute to all three of the major credit reporting agencies. And you know we've talked about this already uh, a little bit, and that is that <clears throat> you don't want to just send it to one credit report a uh, reporting agency who's, who reported incorrectly on your credit because every furnisher is going to be sending that same information to the CRAs and um, they're all going to get the same bad information. They're not going to like redo the information uh, every time they send it to another uh, credit reporting agency. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you send it to all of them. Now, tip number seven, be careful when you're describing the item that's reported incorrectly. So you don't want to just put an account number or just put, as we say in the example here, you don't want to just say, I never had a Capital One credit card, so please delete. Um, you want to um, say, yeah, I haven't had a Capital One credit card. This account number that you have on here is not something I've ever had, but you can also say, and I've never had any kind of Capital One related credit card, if that's true, of course. And you can also um, say that any other account that may be connected to Capital One. So for example, um, uh, many of the creditors that we have will, they might sell the debt, um, they might get bought out by another company, so the name that is reporting the information changes. So the more information you can give and the more you can ask for them to look at, um, the better. Um, you can also say any other account numbers under Capital One, um, because as I said, the debt might get sold, that new uh, creditor or debt buyer or even debt collector may have their own numbering system that they might put on that uh, credit report when it needs to be that original account number uh, that you started off with. So here's just an example um, down at the bottom of this slide 
of how you might word that uh, statement. Okay, tip number eight. Uh, we've talked about documents that you need to keep copies of, send and keep copies of. And this is a really important uh, tip that arises out of that. Uh, is that you've got to include any documentary evidence that you have. Um, and that can be any number of things, but also um, you want to suggest what is the step that the CRA should take to fix this. So um, you might have uh, a letter from the creditor that says this account has been paid in full. You want to send that in. Um, Keep the original, of course, but you know, send in a copy. Um, you may have talked to someone about uh, the error here, and they at the company they may have acknowledged, oh yeah, that that is an error. We're going to fix that. Get that name, number, date, and time of that, and make sure they you know send you an email or a letter that says, oh yeah, this is incorrect, and we're going to fix it. Because if somehow that doesn't end up translating into that error being fixed, then you want to have that documentary evidence that you can uh, send in as a follow up if it doesn't uh, happen. Um, another good example is if you're saying, hey, I've never had a Capital One credit card, never opened a credit card. Um, so send me a copy of the uh, credit card application that this comes out of. And that's always a good way to um, start down the path of getting that um, negative item off your credit report if you never had a credit card and they can't produce um, anything with your name on it, um, then you may have uh, a pretty easy uh, correction of a dispute. Um, if you have witnesses to the dispute, like I said, if you talked to somebody at the company and they agreed with you, you can give their name and address to uh, include in your dispute. Um, you can also uh, have uh, records, for example, from the local clerk of court. So maybe there's a judgment that's against somebody with your same name but it's at a different address because it's not you. You know, some of us have very regular names, you know, whether it be you know, Joe Smith or Jane Jones or whatever, there may be a lot of people out there with that same name. And um, that judgment might get reported on your credit report, even though it's not you. So you want to be able to pull those documents and send them in with your dispute. Or if it was a um, lawsuit you know, that resulted in judgment, you can also get the name of the uh, attorney for the creditor. Um, you're going to be able to find that from the information online or just from, you know, calling the clerk of court and provide that information so that can be part of the investigation that the credit report, the reporting agency does um, at your request. Okay, tip number nine include information, if you have it or if you can find it, that questions the furnisher's accuracy in other ways. So the furnisher, again, is who's reporting uh, to your credit report um, some something negative, right? Well, um, if it's a debt buyer or a debt collector and they have lawsuits against them for incorrectly reporting things, um, in a great volume, that's something that you can send in and say, look, this same group has, you know, um, been sued by, you know, whatever, maybe a government agency has called them to task for improperly reporting things. You can include that because that does support your case. It's not going to be the be all end all, but I think it's supportive of your case. So if you have it or have the ability to get it, um, you know, give a try to including that um, as well. Um, and, you know, again, any, anything that you have that raises questions about how they operate, anything you have is good. You might have here in South Carolina, there might be complaints to the um, Department of Consumer Affairs about this particular creditor. Um, there may have been an action by the Attorney General against this uh, 
company. Uh, you never know. So you can so easy these days to look that kind of information up. It's definitely worth trying and including with your dispute um, documentation. Um, and again, a couple of other sources for this are the CFPB and the FTC. Um, they will have uh, information about complaints by consumers about these, uh, uh, potentially about these particular uh, creditors or furnishers of information. Okay, finally, tip number 10. If you do agree to pay the debt or part of it, Maybe you determined that, hey, this was um, my debt, but it shouldn't have only been this much. Or I'll only pay this amount of money to um, get it taken care of. While you're doing that, you can ask the um, uh, furnisher, the, the, the company that furnished that information to Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion, um, ask them to agree that the negative information is going to be deleted from your credit report. Uh, because if you're going to go ahead and pay this, you know, you want to get something in uh, return uh, if you can. Now, they may say, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. It's just not allowed or, or something of that nature. Um, it is allowed. They can do it. Um, and so that can be part of your negotiation with them is to say, look, I, I want, I'm going to pay this amount of money, but I'm not going to pay it unless you agree in writing, of course, make sure you get it in writing. Um, that this negative item is going to be removed from my credit report. You need to always remember that um, just paying it off is not going to remove it from your credit report. That's a mistake that um, some people do make. But if you're persistent and you advocate for yourself with this uh, furnisher of the information, um, hopefully they'll eventually uh, remove that negative item for you. They certainly should remove it if it's inaccurate. So that's the 10 tips, but sometimes uh, you do the best you can and doing it yourself just doesn't do the trick. And perhaps the uh, furnisher or the credit reporting agencies are not doing what they should. They're just doing that cursory review and just letting it go at that and maybe hoping that you won't do anything further. So if you haven't been able to get an error fixed and you've got all that evidence that it should be fixed, you've made that dispute, it's not been fixed, um, then you might want to think about hiring a lawyer. Uh, you want to hire somebody who is experienced at the Fair Credit Reporting Act cases. Um, they, it can be very complicated. Um, there's a lot of pitfalls for those who are not um, familiar enough with it. So definitely get someone who is experienced uh, in that way, because you don't want to, um, for example, sue under one of the provisions that doesn't allow you to sue for that. Um, there are a few of those in the FCRA. So that's just one example of um, what can happen if you try to do it yourself or um, you don't get a lawyer that's got some experience in the area. So one of the ways to find a consumer attorney is the National Association of Consumer Advocates. Now that's a national group, but we do have lawyers in South Carolina who are members of that group and who do handle FCRA cases. Um, we do handle those um, in some circumstances here at South Carolina Legal Services. So um, you can always apply for that kind of assistance uh, from us. But the uh, National Association of Consumer Advocates is a group of attorneys who specialize in consumer protection law. And we do have attorneys in South Carolina that are members of that organization, so you can find them there uh, as well. So that is it um, for our uh, 10 tips on the Fair Credit Reporting Act and disputing inaccurate information. I hope you found this helpful especially if you are finding that you do have errors on your credit report. Definitely um, go back and review all this and try to take heed of the tips that we have uh, mentioned here in this uh, presentation. And again, you can always apply for our assistance here at South Carolina Legal Services. You see on the screen now how you can apply by telephone or online. Uh, those are both 
uh, great ways to apply. Our intake office by telephone is open Monday through Thursday from nine to six. You can't always um, call on the telephone during those hours. You might be at work or, or something like that. So um, try the online application. Um, if you have anything that's missing when you make the online application and we need more information, our intake office might follow up and ask you for more information about your situation. But otherwise, that online um, application you know, works pretty well. And we actually have a Level Up Law episode that gives you some really good tips and tricks for um, having a successful online application. We also invite you to uh, check out all of our online resources. We have um, two websites here that are chock full of information. All of these Level Up Law episodes are posted on our YouTube channel, which is also uh, listed here. And we have a lot of other stuff that's on our YouTube channel besides Level Up Law episodes. So you should definitely go check that out. Um, we're also very active on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So you can um, get news about upcoming events there. Um, you can get little tips uh, along the way. It may not be something that's going to have a whole webinar on it, but we might put out a little legal tip that could be helpful to you. So definitely go and subscribe to all those, particularly uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you get um, your notifications when we post something there, and it might be something that could be helpful uh, to you. Um, and as far as this presentation that you have just watched, Definitely, if it was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody you think it might also be helpful to. And we always appreciate uh, your uh, loyalty to the show and your viewership, both live and uh, on our YouTube channel. So that's it for today. That concludes um, the webinar. I'm just going to quickly check and make sure that there are not any questions and I don't see any. So if you have a question or a suggestion about a particular subject you'd like to hear more about, um, please put it in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback that you give us. And remember to tune in next week for another episode of Level Up Law. Thanks for tuning in everybody.